mentioned a little bit earlier, um, kind of like a chart that you made. Um, walk me through kind of that chart. Take it as if I'm another teacher who's coming to you for advice and guidance on this particular chart. What is the chart for? Um, how would you set it up? How would you advise others to set it up? And how has that benefited you in being able to like ascertain how your kids are moving along and developing? Um, and then second, maybe we can talk a little bit about some of those um, activities that you've been using to kind of gauge their level of improvement. Okay, so checklists are something that are very valuable tools for um, when you have a class of 20 or more kids, it's very hard to see everybody. Um, but if you just utilize a checklist to give a quick little notation when you see a, a child that might be a little bit behind where you'd like them to be, just quick, quick, make a little X, a little check by their in, on a chart with a column. And um, that way you don't have to make a check for every child that can do the activity, but just a, a quick little note if they are struggling, having a little trouble. Um, so it gives you an idea of how many in a particular class or in a particular grade level are struggling with the activities that you're doing. And then you can use that in your instruction. So uh, it's kind of like making sure you have some data to help you change what you're doing uh, in your instruction. And then it also helps out when you're doing your assessments to know what kids you know, you, um, needed a little more time. Um, so we've utilized checklists, not just for locomotor movements, but for all kinds of our uh, developmental skills, such as tossing and throwing and things like that. Um, just a great way to keep things organized, to not be overwhelmed by watching an entire class and, you know, being able to keep, uh, keep things organized with a checklist. In terms of specific activities, uh, like I said, tag games uh, that I don't do too much of, but I know some other teachers do a few more than I might, but they've used uh, different locomotor movements um, in those tag games to get them working on those skills. One thing we've also did a few years back, we noticed that uh, kids at this level, K through two, were really struggling with jump rope skills. So we wanted to incorporate jump rope skills more into activities. So we try to focus on a different skill each year that we think we've noticed from the year prior that uh, kids struggled a little bit with. And then we'll use that particular area to focus in on the, the next year to um, to improve so not just doing it in that one unit but trying to touch a, a touch at it like example uh, using jump ropes as a station so if i'm uh, practicing kicking skills um, we might have six kicking stations and then an extra station would be just a random jump rope station just to get some extra practice at some point in the lesson.